All right, so um, today we're gonna to be doing a replacement of the Uconnect screen on a 2018 Challenger. Yeah, it's like a common problem with these Challengers, Chargers, the Durangos, um, pretty much any Chrysler product that has that same nav screen. Uh, I think there were some problem years between like 15 and 18, 19, somewhere in that year range. Uh, basically they would delaminate over time with heat. And mine started doing that. And the problem is when they delaminate, it's something with the glue that they use behind the touch screen, uh, is it'll start randomly pushing buttons for you and becomes completely unusable. The problem with that is that on most of your controls, whether it be your seat controls, uh, your navigation controls, all those things, um, they're all reliant on that screen. Um, they do cover it under warranty, um, but outside of warranty, sometimes you can go through Uconnect and it seems like it's 50-50 based on what I've been reading on the forum. Some some people they'll cover, some people they won't. Um, I don't like taking cars to the dealer. It's problematic. Um, they have a car for a while. They have to order the screen. It's a couple month wait. All those reasons, I prefer to just do it myself, spend the money. I don't like to use warranty. I don't like techs working on my cars. Um, just because I've had past issues where they've done joyriding, um, et cetera, et cetera. And so for that reason, I decided to just purchase it myself. So I went on eBay, bought a Uconnect LG factory screen. It's uh, an upgraded model. It's the, there's a 01 and an 02 dash uh, part number difference. And this one is supposed to be a revised edition, I think. Uh, I'm assuming they changed the, uh, basically the glue that's on the model. So here's what you get. So for 339 shipped, which is uh, just the screen, not the whole unit, just the screen. Um, this is what you get, okay? So, there we go. And there's an LG setup. And it is a factory screen, LG SL02. Okay, um, it's got the connection to connection cords um, that you hook up. And so basically what you do is you take the dash part, pull the old screen, the whole unit off, separate it, and then you just swap the screen and um, it loads back up and you return back to normal. So um, we'll get started on it. Here we go. Okay, so basically interior trim of the Challengers. Uh, it's all like kind of rubberized and so it's just a matter of like prying this apart. Um, it's kind of how everything kind of sets on here. I've got like a little phone holder set that kind of comes on here. Um, this pro clip, it's actually a really good setup. So basically you just prop all four corners and you just kind of slowly pry it apart. I'm using like an a, a exterior body panel trim piece. Uh, that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, so let's see if we can get this off of here. Uh, without breaking anything. Okay, so basically Taking this inner console, it's all held on by clips um, to the back side. Uh, so I'm using an exterior trim piece. You can get these at uh, AutoZone or whatever. I just kind of pry everything off. It's all plastic. So, I mean, I still risk of cracking this, the actual trim, but um, with this all being kind of like rubberized, it's not, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be too bad. Um, I've seen people use metal pieces while they're doing it. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I've got some of these already popped off. Prior to hitting record here. You just kind of go along and you just take each piece off one at a time. And I'm going to go ahead and take my pro clip off too. So I don't have to worry about it. Which is kind of an interesting setup because there's literally no screws that hold this on. Uh, it's literally just held on by clips. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> uh, I like it for uninstallation purposes, but uh, it seems like a very American made product thing to do. Uh, so I'm just kind of going around it. I get piece after piece off so we can hopefully pry this off of here. This is mostly coming off. My main thing is I don't want to crack this because I, I sometimes get a little aggressive and when I do I end up 
breaking things, and I don't want to do that. Let's see here. I think it's probably more like impatience than anything. But it's mostly off, fairly quick. Like I've spent three minutes maybe on this, and I'm gonna have if I get this off here, you know, direct access to my screen. It's fairly minimal effort, which is kind of neat. So, they say to, um, I could disconnect the battery technically, but I'm not going to do that right now. Okay, so that's it. So now it's off. Uh, uh, looks like you got basically... I don't know if you can see this, but it's all clips on the back side. I don't think I broke any of them. They look all still there, so despite my best efforts, um, still there. That's good. I'm going to set this in the floorboard. Um, as you can see the screen, so we'll try to zoom in a little bit. If it'll let me here. Um, let's take it off so you can kind of see real quick. So um, you've got screws here, there, 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 and there, uh, four screws, and that actually separates the whole unit. Um, so we're gonna take those apart and then go from there. Maybe I'm recording a video, so hold on. Oh, uh, you just pecking wood. All right, so we're taking four screws off the screen. My little helper's here. Um, Well, stay out here, baby. Just go sit, sit right there. I'll be done in just a second, okay? All right, so four screws coming off. Let's see here. Okay, so those are off, same with the center cup holder. And the screen should come out. And it does. Now on the back, you can see here, um, there's color-coded like cables. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is disconnect each of those, kind of in a way, so I can get this out of here. Looks like they just have push pins. I like how they're color coded like that. It looks like they pushed down. So just easy. There's one. I will say Chrysler did a good job at making this process easy. That is very easy. All right. All right. And the next video I'll get these off of here and I'll show you the video screen. All right, so it's off. I got our connectors. Super easy. I mean, I'm in this five minutes so far. Uh, and then next up, we're going to be hooking, uh, replacing the screen off. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, back side of the screen. The one, two, three, four, five, six screws holding the center screen on. Um, so I'm going to take all those out, but this main one right here, because uh, that's going to hold the screen actually attached to it. Uh, just from the separation, it makes that part easier. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, take those off. I'm actually using the same screwdriver from earlier. I want to jinx myself, but so far this process has been fairly easy. Easier than expected. Long screws in those.
kind of an interesting unit in how it operates. I'll tell you, I've just kind of been frustrated uh, a little bit with um, Chrysler just because, I mean, I know every manufacturer has issues, but this is kind of a big one just because of the functionality. The whole functionality of the car relies on this screen working properly. So they, uh, in my opinion, they should have issued a recall. Um, but I think there's so many of them uh, that wasn't gonna happen. All right, so now there's these little tabs on the corners that have to pop off to get this main screen to come off of here. So I'm gonna play with those for a second. So I get these to come off. It's kinda, you can even feel the glue. It's kinda sticky through here. Corner tabs are kind of glued on. I suspect once you get the corners off, everything else becomes easier. Trying to be somewhat careful. I guess technically I don't have to be since this is the old screen. But the corners have glue on them, which I wasn't expecting. So basically, I think this is going to make it a little bit more difficult to get it online. I might have to use multiple. Yeah, so it's better if you use two screws. Um, so that corner's off. And then probably have to do the same process for the rest of them. That corner's off. So this one's kind of off. Let's flip it over. And I'm sure there's a better way to do this. This is just the way that I'm doing it. Okay, so that corner's off. Feels like it's about to come off now. All right, so most corners are off. Got a little straggler in this back corner here. Man, this glue is sticky. Very sticky glue substance on there. You can kind of see it. Probably part of the heat. I'm sure that's part of uh, the issue with the main screen, the heat. Okay, so that's off. Now there's like a ground wire. It's connected to the top here. I'm not sure purpose of that. I don't know if it actually sits on the screen or not. But at this point, you can flip it over, take that main last bolt out and the screen should come off. I just kept it on there and make this part easier. So I'm gonna take that last screw out of here now. And it should just fall right out. In theory. Oops, well, that's the back side. I don't think I want to take that apart. I'm going to keep that on there because I don't really know what that does per se. Uh, Okay, so there's ribbons on here. I'm gonna flip it over. Try to be as careful as I can. There's little clips. That clip takes that ribbon off. And the clip here takes this ribbon off. Pretty easy to remove and now it's off. 
Uh, so this is the screen before. This is the o SLX-01 model. And the one I bought was the XLX-02 model. So hopefully it's an upgraded model and hopefully it works. I hope, we'll see. But I mean, everything looks fine from this end. It's just the delamination, you can see it right there. Let's go get the new one, be back. Okay, so this is the new screen. You can see it's a SL02, which physically looks the same. I'm a little concerned with this X part on the part numbers, um, but just eyeballing them, it looks just like the same screen, so we'll see. I hope this works. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be pissed if this is like a off or not. All right, so you basically slide in the tabs um, and then you lock them in. It's just an easy process. Put a little. I'm gonna set this down in here. That one's in. This one has tape over the back side of it. I'm not sure if that's supposed to come off or not. You know, let me look and see if there's any instructions here. Okay, so it's definitely on the other one, so it stays on this one, I'm assuming. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pry this piece in there and then lock it down. Some ribbon. Okay. My biggest concern would be to getting that ribbon like just right. Uh, so I'm gonna probably start the car first. There's also a screen protector on here. I'm gonna take off partially so I can get it off later. So this is covered. There. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna set that in there. Okay, and then it clips in, so I'm clipped. I've got my screen here to where I can get it off, I feel like, for the most part. Make sure I don't have trouble getting a screen off of here. I don't think so. I want to keep it kind of on there intact in case I scratch, start to scratch it beforehand. All right, so now we're gonna flip it over. Put the screws back in. down probably go center out first it sounds like the best strategy here it's just from most things usually start better center than corners I have no idea if there's a torque rating or anything like that. What I'll probably do is I will plug this in or put the dash back on, start the car and see if it's gonna work. So far I'm about 10 minutes into this process. Super easy. Okay. 
Okay, let's put it in the car. Okay, so screen protector's off. Uh, it's locked on. Bolts are in. We're just gonna hook up and start up. See what happens. So it's, it goes well. This little main screw goes. It looks like this. Lift the piece down. Wrap this up. That went easy. Let's color coordinate. Each clip on. Okay. Now before I screw this in here, let's start the car. Let's see what happens. Probably have to reset the battery, is my guess. So let's go ahead and tighten this in. Here's both in there. Uh... Okay, so main screen's on. Got it in there, and now just pop the main dash pieces on, and it just pops in. Super easy. I mean, it does not get much easier than that, I'll be honest with you. I'll just put my Pro Clip back on, which requires doing this. I like how this is setting up on this corner. Something doesn't feel right. Pop this out a little bit. Let's see why that's doing that. So this left corner not setting as flush as I'd like it to. I think it should set in there more. I'll try putting it in that side first, see what happens. So basically I just pushed in the left side first. So the side over towards your driver's side vents goes in first, makes it easier. 
And then now we're back to this part. Pro clip. All right, let's test it. Test it again. It's good, no DLAM, perfect. All right, so <clears throat> if you're having the DLAM problem, 100% recommend just ordering the screen. Not worried about the dealer. That was $330, I was done in 15 minutes. Uh, problem is now solved, at least seems to be. Long-term wise, I don't know how that's gonna go, but supposedly this is a better screen. Um, so to me, doing that versus sitting at a dealer or whatever it may be, or spending, Twelve hundred or thirteen hundred dollars on the whole unit it just doesn't make any sense. Um, that's just way too easy of a process. Those screens are all over the place on eBay. I will send a link uh, in this video to the person I bought from. Um, and if there's any long-term issues, I'll do a follow-up video. But right now, I mean, I'm like that's one of the easiest things that I've had to do ever on a vehicle. So uh, if you're uh, worried about it, it's like two two tools and fifteen minutes of your time. Uh, cannot get any easier. You don't have to deal with the service tech. You're out a little bit of money, but for me, uh, I'm fine with that. So anyway, so I will conclude this with a draggy video. Uh, keep in mind, um, it's a manual six, and also keep in mind, this is not Hero Times, it's not Hero Weather, um, and this is not Hero uh, DA. Uh, so this is just, uh, uh, you know, 30 PSI, 35 PSI in the tires, did not hook. Etc. Um, that's my drag time. So the only thing you really take from it is probably 60 to 130. Uh, mods are um, a ripper tune lower, uh, cat delete, muffler delete, uh, and AFE cold air. And that's it. All right. Stay tuned.